There's this crazy new YouTube video, and I mean crazy. Ludwig did a did a interview with Susan Wojcicki, the CEO of YouTube. So we're gonna watch this <laughs> because I have to. I mean, I just have to. We did bring a special chair for you. Really? Wait, what's my special chair? Is this the chair? Yeah, special chair. Okay. Have you seen it? No. Yo. <laughs> That's so sick. What a sick chair. Um, I want to know if Susan was the one to bring up this idea. Like, was Susan the one like, let's make a chair for his podcast, but it just has his face all over it. That's genius. Why are you here? Can I ask? Well, you invited me yeah, to be here. But and why did you accept? <laughs> like, I feel oh. like there should be 15 layers of people who are like, bad idea, bad idea, bad idea, bad idea. And then you're like, yeah, you're right. Well, actually, what happened was... You you mm -hmm. asked me right. Mm -hmm. on, I tweeted on, out. You tweeted on. You tweeted it, and my team said, "Why don't you write something like, let's talk about it?" I just wrote back, "Yeah, seems like fun." Yeah. And then afterwards, they were all surprised. They were like, "That's all. That's all we were recommending." <laughs> <laughs> Do you watch YouTube? I just say I watch a lot of YouTube. <laughs> okay. All right. So watch a lot of and YouTube. I watch a lot of different kinds of YouTube, but mm -hmm. but. You know, it's funny because people ask me and they assume, well, you're CEO of YouTube. You must spend a lot of time watching YouTube, right? Yeah. And, and and I do watch YouTube, but yeah. that's not the qualifications for the job. It's not like, oh, the more you watch YouTube, the better CEO you are. It's like, not like, damn, I was just hoping to watch like, I don't know, 30,000 hours of YouTube and then I become CEO. That would be so nice. Well, let's do a test if you're down. And this is a very simple test. I'm going to show you an emote that is very important in the live streaming space. And you yes. tell me the emotion that attaches with. Okay. At least it's just emotion. Like quizzing her on like the name of it would be insane. Because she would get maybe, maybe two of them. If we're lucky. It, mm. I think you'll do well. I think you're selling yourself I'm not short. Sure. It's I'm just not sure. the picture and you say the emotion that attaches. So here's the first one. Okay. And then you say, what, you don't have to say what it's called even, just what emotion you think it is. It um, conveys if you bad. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. It's 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 called sad. It's like sad. Yes. Yeah. That looks. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Easy. Good. Happy. Yeah. Yeah. It's it's just funny. Just yeah. ha ha's. Yeah. Easy. I think you're doing. Farming little w's. Okay. Nice. Okay. Okay. Good. Just have a few more. Okay. Ooh, this one's hard. This one's hard. Oh, we already did that one. Sad. No, no. This is a different one. It's this. Oh. The frog is used a lot. Okay. He's important. But what fear does he express here? Or uh, like what? <laughs> What, what is going on? Yeah, yeah. It's 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 general fear, anxiety, okay. stress. Okay. <laughs> you just okay. said it out loud. Two more, two more. Poggers. Uh, this one's the hard one. Wow. Yeah. It's poggers. Let's go, wow. Susan. And then final one. Oh. Um, that looks like no. Like no. <laughs> it's actually <laughs> a boy waiting for a bus. That oh. one was a hard one. Yeah, it's okay. people waiting okay. for bus. That is insane that he would ask the CEO of YouTube that. I just want to hear Susan Wojcicki say, like, poggers. That's all I want in life. That from this point forward, I want to make it big on YouTube just so I can make Susan say poggers or pog champ or some form of that. Because that would just be the pinnacle of success. I have talked to a lot of creators. I feel like every day I find a creator that has like a million plus subscribers that I've never heard of ever. Mm -hmm. And they're huge. Mm -hmm. uh, but it's just because they're in a niche I don't know. But there is one thing that does unite us all, and I'll, and I'll transition us here. Yeah. It's the YouTube ranking system. Like every creator inherently understands how you feel when you have a 1 out of 10. Yeah. It's very poggers. And yeah. a 10 out of 10, and it's very sad. <laughs> true, true, uh, true. W when did that come into play? Was that mm -hmm. you? How do you feel about that system? We have heard the feedback that some people don't want to know, um, or they don't like the way that we tell them um, right. in terms of the rankings. And that that's fair. Been certainly valid feedback that we've heard and are working on. And we have tried different experiments like removing some of the ranking or removing some of the statistics that maybe creators didn't want. But then other creators will tell us like, well, where did that go? Like, we liked it. We wanted it. Mm -hmm. And so I think I like the rating system pretty well. It's important that we're giving you accurate numbers in terms of your statistics and how your videos are performing. But what we're going to try to do is give it in a way that we think more creators would appreciate it. I, at the end of the day, I think the, the thing I like about YouTube is how much information I do have, which mm -hmm. is almost problematic because I find myself surfing through it too much. Yeah. And a lot of it's even.
I agree with this totally. YouTube gives you so much data compared to like Twitch. Twitch gives you nothing to work with. YouTube's like, yeah, this video, you had extra click-through rate, extra engagement, extra watch time. Like you got all the numbers and it's so nice to be able to know like what actually works. Whereas Twitch, like you have no idea why somebody ever clicks off your stream. They might just click off for any reason. You'll never know why. And can I swear? Yeah. They're dog shit. The live stream yeah. analytics, oh, uh -huh. I have to True. hit up Jeffrey to find my average viewers. And part Actually of the problem true. is since YouTube live streaming so new, there's not like a third party site that tracks it for you. Mm. Okay. All right. Mm. Well, that's easy to fix. Okay. You know, there are lots of times things go un as unexpected ways. All right. We'll talk sure. about dislikes. All right. You don't have to push me yeah, too hard. Sure. Uh, <laughs> dislikes. Yeah. That, okay. Mm. When you did dislikes, you probably knew because you have forensic analysts mm -hmm. that it was going to go bad. Mm hmm. What, like, how does that work? Are you guys, like, in the room sweating when it's about to be released? Like, how is it going to be received? So, uh, first of all, we, we do try to understand when we release any new feature mm -hmm. whether or not it's going to go well or not. And I will say that sometimes we get it wrong. So there are times where there's something we're super stressed about, and then the community's like, oh, that's not a big deal. I will say I'm surprised they haven't reverted yet because I'm pretty sure – the, the overall consensus is people want the YouTube dislike button back. Or there are times that we release something, um, like we had no idea that the rewind video in 2018 was gonna go badly. Like wait, wait, no one? idea. The, oh, the most, the most, yeah, yeah, the yeah. most dislike <laughs> yeah. video on the internet. Yeah, you guys got um, boomed yeah. on that one. Yeah. That was so, tough. Yeah. That was their 10 out of 10 video. See, now they know. And so something like dislikes, we, you know, we ran many experiments on that, and and I understand there were people, you know, many people, and, and yes, we heard loud and clear why people were unhappy with that decision. But then we also saw the impact that it was having on a lot of new creators, and heard from many creators who probably, do, you know, you're not hearing from um, when we removed the dislike that the creators that were harmed right. by having it, uh, you know, for for decisions like that, we just we know it's going to be tough but we just power through it. Do you have an NFT? NFTs? I do have, have a few. I also have one. Okay. It's called okay. Goose Ass. Okay. <laughs> it's, it's worth a couple of Ethereum. So first of all, we are seeing that creators are um, selling their videos and memes as NFTs, right? So like David After Dentist, right, for right. example, sold for... Mm -hmm. Um, was like eleven thousand dollars, for yeah. example. So we do see many creators engaging in this. Charlie bit my finger, three hundred k. They deleted it. It's another second example, yeah. and there there are many, many more. That is and crazy that that sold if as an NFT. Creators are selling their videos as NFTs. Then, like that's an important form of monetization, and it would not be. It, I I don't think it would be good if that all happened on another platform. Mm -hmm. For many reasons, like a, it's a form of monetization, and we want to provide the best monetization to all creators. True, true. But the second reason is, is that we also are in the best position to verify which assets actually belong to which creators. Mm -hmm. So, like, it would be a problem for you if some other third-party site were selling your videos without knowing that it belonged to you. Or you my goose ass. Yes, or your goose ass. Like, look, if you want to invest in your goose ass, like, <laughs> yeah. then go ahead. <laughs> yes. And okay. we would want to be there to protect you with uh -huh. it. And if you want to sell your goose ass, then, like, yes, we would want to make sure that you are selling it and not someone else is selling it. Sure. And with What timeline are we on where the CEO of YouTube is literally talking? The, the words goose ass are coming out of her mouth. Those are words that have never been uttered in the history of ever. And I'm here for it. At the end of the day, what YouTube does is like we're a platform that distributes content and does monetization. And if NFTs is an important part of that equation, then we think we should be there. I am and a bitter millionaire who's mad at other millionaires for how much millionaires <laughs> want and how much more they get. And I always feel like the rich get richer. And I feel like NFTs don't help what I view as the most important thing that you talked about uh -huh. earlier, which is small creators. Yeah, It's usually just for bigger creators to get more money. And oftentimes, not do the due diligence of correctly taking care of the community that invests NFTs and actually doing the perks. That is the most base thing I've ever heard. True. It is literally just for the rich to get richer, and it doesn't help out the smaller parties at all. But don't you think this could also help small creators? I, I would actually argue that NFTs can actually help small creators to be able to get started. Um, like, we've seen that already with with people with creators and musicians using it as a form of fundraising and then using that 
as a way of being able to do additional work. And with a lot of the smart contract stuff, there's potentially a way for creators to have more liquidity where they're only selling a part of the assets. They're raising, um, you know, they're raising some funds. And if the content does really well, they're able to reap some of those benefits from that as well. So I, I actually would argue it's going to be a really important tool in the future to smart to help small creators. That's fair. I would disagree because to get into NFTs, a lot of the time, I think you need to have a lot of money behind it. Maybe not a lot, but like you at least need like, if you're going to make an art NFT, like profile picture NFTs, you need to have somebody design the art. Um, if you're doing like randomly generated stuff, you have this a system to randomly generate that. And one person alone can't do that. So if you don't have friends who inherently can do that, you got to pay people. Well, anyway, we'll 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 check in in mm -hmm. a few years, and we'll we'll okay. see. Okay, I'm down. Five okay, years. okay, five, five years. years. Okay, in. even even two years. I I think okay. in, I think two years we're gonna we'll we're gonna be really careful. Sure. I, I I think that you are gonna be okay with what we do with NFTs. That's my prediction. In okay. two years, that sounds like they already have a plan for our it. Goal. Our goal is really to use hmm. it to protect creators, protect creator assets, hmm. and enable new forms. Which made me think about shorts monetization, Sure. which works way different. Mm -hmm. um, and I watched this Hank Green video. I don't know if you saw this. I did. It's a pretty good video. Yeah. Was he right mm. in that short monetizations being a fund of $10 million, whatever large money, inherently because shorts will always grow, will mean less money per view and that this is not a sustainable model and that you could pull the rug on us at any time. And what do you think about that? Well, we set up the short fund just as a, as an initial form of monetization for creators because the reality is, um, well, A, we're, we are growing shorts, which is doing well. I don't know if you saw, we released that we have over 5 trillion views of shorts. It's insane. Which is um, it's crazy. And we also are Ridiculous. getting our ads started, so we've been running more ads there. Mm -hmm. And but that you know, it takes time for us to get that. But our goal is to pay creators in a much, much more sustainable way. And I hope they make it like at least not intrusive. I think TikToks are pretty good. They play one at the beginning, so everybody gets one when they sign onto the the website, and then or the app, and then from there, um, you get like an ad every couple of scrolls. And you can just skip it, but the ad company still pays for it, so it doesn't matter. So I don't want to give any secrets out but yet. But maybe short funds aren't permanent. I don't. I don't think they're permanent. Hot skills cool. In the yard. Cool. If, okay, you go to my homepage, uh -huh. Ludwig, uh -huh. and then it's under home, it, 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 whatever you want it to be. Then yeah. it's videos, and it's my yeah. long form videos. Yeah. Then there's a shorts tab. And then there's a live stream tab. Yes. And it's all there. Yes. But in one channel. Yes. But but not all mixed together in the way that it is today. Yes. I agree with this wholeheartedly. All on one channel, but they do not affect each other in terms of like algorithmic performance. I think that is a very important thing. Do you even fully understand the algorithm? I try to understand it, but but it is complex and mm -hmm. i mean we also have a system that learns right so that that's the whole point of our systems it's not like it's not static i mean we use a lot of really really advanced machine learning to figure out and predict what are the videos that any one user would want to see mm -hmm. um and you know we have probably like billions of you know pieces of data that we use to try to predict that could I hit you with a couple true falses of the algorithm? Yeah, yeah okay. sure, sure. CTR is important. Probably, yes. The way to think about it is like, if you were a system and you were predicting whether or not a video was gonna be successful and a user would wanna watch it, like, would if nobody clicked on the video, probably it's not a very good video or the thumbnail's not very good. But, but the problem with that is like, okay, well then what if nobody clicked on it because it isn't being clicked on because nobody saw it because it's not being recommended. That's how small creators feel, I feel like. Okay, so click through rate important. Average view duration is um, important. It varies. Like and probably that will be my answer for everything. Yeah, it varies. Um but because think about I hate it for, that. Think Just about it for sure. Doesn't matter or not. Different. I find it harder to hold viewers on YouTube than I did on Twitch. Hmm. And I think that's partially because like the average view duration I've seen is lower because people probably come in 
and they're like watching for a bit and they're like, wait, I could just watch a video of this guy mm. or a video of another person that's edited and I'm competing with harder people, mm. you know? Mm. So I've noticed it's harder to keep. That was interesting. I was going to say, oh, because on Twitch, you feel like you're competing with everybody in the sidebar where YouTube doesn't have that. So you'd think it would be better. But what's better than a person on the sidebar, a video on the sidebar that's just better. Anyway, Susan, I've taken up too much of your time. Is there any last things you want to say or shout out? Uh, well, I do want to I, – I did hear that one, that you had an issue with the Postal Service on one of your awards. Yeah. That something, something very important was lost. Yeah, I never Is got my true? one million sub plaque. Okay. I'm at 2.7. I never got it. Okay. So I want to let you know I, I personally brought it here okay. to your oh. yard. Yeah. Here, I'll, I'll help appreciate you here. that. Presented to Ludwig <laughs> for being the shortest streamer. That is. You did this? That is cruel, YouTube. But beautiful. But so cruel. <laughs>